so we are going to continue with the smile reanimation and we are going to quickly move ahead to the muscle transfer so as discussed briefly the free functional muscle transfer we have option of gracilis which is the most popular one and we have a motor input of the cross facial nerve graft because it provides a symmetric and spontaneous smile and the most popular vessels that we have are the facial artery and vein apart from that we have the rectus abdominis muscle the latissimus dorsi the rectus femoris for the muscle options the nerve to masseter spinal accessory hypoglossal nerve as the motor input especially in cases of bilateral palsy mobius syndrome and for recipient if for some reason the facial vasculature is not available then we can go in for the superficial temporal artery and vein now the gracilis muscle is popular for a lot of reasons first of all it gives us a good pedicle length which is given by the medial circumflex femoral artery and vein the obturator nerve its anterior division which supplies the gracilis is of a good length as well the muscle is dispensable that means we have minimal donor site functional problems the scar is well hidden and this nerve and this muscle is very versatile that means we can customize the muscle depending on the length and the tension that we need and the most common way of harvesting is by splitting the muscle longitudinally and then it is chosen and customized remembering the principles of muscle transfer why is the tension of the muscle very important because if we have transferred the muscle but it is flaccid it is not going to work as we desire and therefore the tension and the vector of pull are very important for which a preoperative analysis is also important now in cases of the gracilis muscle an important question is that how is the muscle used so the muscle that is the gracilis muscle is reversed and it is inserted at the oral commissure reversed means the proximal end of the muscle will go to the oral commissure the reason for this is the nerve now we do not want the nerve to travel a long distance because we want the reinnervation to occur very quickly so the muscle is taken and it is reversed and it is placed so that the nerve coaptation is shortest the pedicle length is good therefore a coaptation that is the anastomosis with the facial artery and vein is not a problem another important question is that how would you do the insertion so insertion occurs around the oral commissure and the upper lip muscle and it is done in a basket weave sort of fashion so that you have a good insertion which helps to create the vector of pull as we have decided by the preoperative smile analysis where is the other attachment proximally of this muscle so since it has to be a good tough structure which helps to support the muscle and prevents its flaccidity and gravity acting on it we have the preauricular fascia or the temporal region or the zygoma where the proximal fixation of the muscle can be done now as discussed usually it can be a single stage or the popular two stage procedure and after that also it takes usually a period of 6 months for the transferred muscle to start acting between which all the exercises the biofeedback the nerve and muscle stimulation is done and therefore the important question also of post operative management so you have transferred the muscle but how are you going to make sure that the muscle stays alive till it starts to function properly therefore you must know all the points also like i mentioned biofeedback that is by looking in the mirror and exercising having the cortical plasticity to help the muscle to act especially in cases of transfer when you use the nerve to masseter hypoglossal or accessory and how the training of the newly transferred muscle is done must be also explained to the patient